So there, and welcome back to another video tutorial on generative AI, AI art. So in this video, I'm going to show you a new user interface, which is a uh, Comfy UI, no, a user interface for stable diffusion. So in the previous videos, show you Focus and Automatic 11.11. So Focus it is the easiest one to use. Automatic 11.11 will give you more flexibility, but since it start to get complicated and then this one it is a maximum level level of complication of complexity but i think it is the most flexible of all of the uh user interface at least the one once i have shown you so in this video i'm going to show you how to install comfy ui and how to use it, basic uses, but also I'm going to talk a little bit, I'm going to go a little bit in details what is happening here in the theory behind how these images are generated, the stable diffusion and so on, because you need to know that in order to use this user interface. So as you have already used Comfy UI, you open it and maybe you didn't like it and you close it, it's it's very straightforward. It's a little bit visual programming. I found it very straightforward because I already have used this kind of visual programming. You know, you have all these connectors and nodes. So it looks like spaghetti, but it's visual programming. So you need that's why you need to know the theory. So basically what is happening here, you load the node, connect it here in this uh, in these prompts, then you do the sampling, then here the the code and get the image. So then here also you have your, your canvas. That mentioned so this is a simplification of, of the process you click here in queue and you generate the image so you saw here when we generate the image you see what is called denoising now you have noise and then for that noise you get the final image you now so from uh, latin space you go to uh, a pixel space and this is it but to understand what is happening you need to know these steps that later I'm going to go into details. So this is uh, Comfy UI. And honestly, I use this approach when I want to do very complicated things, very complex workflow. But I always stay with focus to generate 110 images. I know it's perfect. And then when I want a little bit more control, I go to automatic 1111 and control next user. That's what I use for to get that control. But also you can do it here, but here you can do more complicated things. Okay, so this was the brief interview. Now let's move to the installation, which I'm going to go real time. Okay, so let's go uh, through the installation. And here you have the link where you can then load Comfy UI in the video description. Also, you have the link. So the uh, the interface probably is the most complex one. It's quite complicated, but uh, paradoxically, it's the easiest installation. So as you go here, you have I invite you to read everything. You have some examples how to get some interfaces and so on. So later we're going to go in details what is happening there. But here you have some of the features. So what the, the important thing, or probably the most attractive uh, feature of Comfy UI is that you can use anything that is being developed you now in this world of uh, st stability diffusion. So the newest, you now the, the the developers development done yesterday, you can use it. Instead, focus it is uh, fixed to what, what they put there. So it's just XD, SD, XL, and some options. So you cannot go uh, uh, beyond that. Then you go into automatic 11 level. You have many extensions, but those extensions go through some quality control. So sometimes it takes time to get the latest improvements. So probably you might be aware like SD, XL, Ultra, like real time prompting or LCM, LoRa, things like that. You can use immediately here in uh, Comfy UI for automatic 11.11, you need to wait until everything is implemented. So in any case, you have some of the features here, it's very flexible, then the installation, you can do it here. So basically, I'm going to go through Windows installation again. I think most of the user are Windows, but if you are a Linux user, I guess you have some skills when it comes to, to using the command line interface. So this will be very straightforward in Linux. Just install Python 3. You need to install exactly 
exactly the right version because the PyTorch library I already mentioned this in the previous models, but the Py, PyTorch uh, library is only only works with this specific uh, Python version that you have here, 3.12. So be careful about that. You install GIT uh, Git and you can install. So in Windows, you click here, download everything. So as usual, it is a big file. You have a lot of things inside. You don't have models, the models you need to download. But when you download, you, you have all this Python, GitHub, all this stuff inside. So that's why it's big. Very important, you need to extract that file. To extract that, that file, do not use the window and extract utility, use 7 seed. It's written here, so be careful about that. So here, my connection quite fast. It was downloaded, downloaded, and let me go and let me do the installation. So I already have one installed, and well, in the videos I have this one that we're doing together, so there are if we make mistake, we're going to do everything in real time. So see that we have here the the file seven zip format. So what I mentioned, do not use the Windows utility, use seven zip. So in my case, let me go. I don't, I have it here. Okay, and let me go and I want to go here. This one extract. Okay. And this is it. So this is very important. Use seven seed, otherwise it's going to give you errors. It's not going to let you extract it, or if you extract, it's going to give you some errors. So this extraction will take some time. If nothing happened, perfect. So hopefully nothing will happen. So let's wait a little bit while while we're extracting everything. Also to mention again, just take your time. Read here the instructions and some stuff. We, Okay, some comments. Um, what is interesting here at the end, okay, you have some comments, some notes. The important one, for instance, how to increase generation speed and so on, this auction. By default, I think you need to do this. It's one you can test it. Very important. All this stuff use, you need to have an NVIDIA video card, a good video card. Otherwise, you can use the CPU, but it's super slow. So you're invited to do it. We'll show you how to, to do it, but it's incredibly slow. And then you have this auction project. You saw when I was generating previously the image, everything in real time, the, the, the noise and so on, is you put this auction. Okay, it's not there by default. You need to add it. So at this point, let's wait a little bit. Okay, while, while it's extracting also, you have some examples here. So as you go here, and to mention that, I, I am just going to address the basic installation. You have here some config UX examples, how to configure that user interface. That is the thing that can be a little bit confusing because you have all that spaghetti there in your interface. So we're going to see what, what is happening there. But also something very important, I'm not going to show you there, but you have then also this utility, Comfy UI Manager. I'm going to show you also how to install that, but that is another video. I don't want to confuse you at a higher level. So this one, it is something like the manager in in automatic 11.11, but you have something similar here for Comfy UI. So it's not installed by default with Comfy UI. It's another extension, but I'm going to show you how to do it. It's very important to have it if you want to install no more advanced stuff, but it's not essential. Okay, so let's see what is happening here. Everything it is extracting perfectly. And just to show something there, so talking about models remember that you need to download those models and you have a marketplace so i like to use civic ai then uh, you have hogging face which basically is the, is the default marketplace but civil ai you can browse and it's it's very nice i really like that one so here also i going to put uh in the video descriptions this link so about comfy ui workflows okay so this also can be very helpful. So generating some images, how, how, how do you create those spaghetti that you saw there? So as you go here, see that you have the preview and how, how things are connected, very helpful. So let's see, okay, our, the extraction is done, yeah. We extract the files, everything perfect. As you see, there are no errors. So we have here everything and these folders you have 
everything there. So that's why it's, it's very big because you have Python and a lot of problem, uh, programs there. So you need to, to install any dependency. So that why this tends to be big and it's even bigger because you need the models. And to show you a little bit about these folders, okay, the only folder that you're going to need to probably uh, interact with is this one, models, where you put all your models. So here, this is the unique location, but you might be aware that those models are very heavy, big files. So later we're going to talk a bit a lot about that. So my advice, I like I like a lot automatic 1111. So I have all those models and look at my installation here in automatic 1111. So you go into your models and everything and, and you put there. So for instance, I have some lot of models there. So I put everything there and from that location that you have in automatic 1111 you can share everything with comfy ui and also with the other I already mentioned about that so if i go into comfy ui and this one that we're working so there is this file when you enter very important this read me very important okay so here you have some basic instructions so to run with nvidia gpus you want to use cpu you have this grid test it on your own, okay, and you will see that it's super slow. What I mentioned that by default, you don't have this extension here, and let me go to plot the, the noise while you are you know, generating the image. So I recommend you to add this here. So put it here in this screen. And by the way, if you put something that doesn't exist, put like X, Y, Z, it will give you the options. When you try to run, it will give you the option because there are many options available, but this is the most important options that you have here to launch a uh, Comfy UI. So that is the most important thing when it comes to this script to launch the to launch Comfy UI, but here keep reading. So see that it's telling you where the checkpoints must be located, where do you can download models, I already talked about this, but what is important, okay, that here is telling you that you have this file here and you can configure that to share models. So if you go here, Comfy UI is this one. So let me go here. So your raise extension example. And there you go. This is the file. Here is where you're going to get, give the path where you have all those models. And basically here, you just need to give the path to a stable where you have in a stable diffusion. So it's very important also the forward slash, back, back slash. Okay, be careful about that. So let me go here and, okay, so you need to give the path. So be careful about you now this forward, backward slash, that, that is tough because it's critical. So let me put it here and see that if now it's going to look for my models in this directory. So now I have a directory in automatic 11.11, I'm sharing everything. So I, know I don't need to double download. And all this stuff is compatible, so it's not a problem. So I recommend you, honestly, install these three tools. They are fantastic. So Focus, which is this is one, then automatic 11.11, that gives you more flexibility. And then when you want to go over the moon, config, config UI. UI. Uh, to point out also, Focus have different forks, so there are variations that can be better than the standard one, but in any case. So to compare this one, I want to prepare another video. So this is it. I now am telling uh, Config UI to look for things there, and now we're ready to launch. So let me go back here, and we're working here. So to launch, just click here. So the first time you launch, it might be a little bit slow. Sometimes it might download some stuff. So have this window there. So I see that it's reading that preview that I mentioned. So if you misspell something there, it's going to give you a whole bunch of options that you can add there. There is an important one is that is you have a GPU card with not much memory. So the option that you can put there just to you to specify that you are using a GPU with not much memory. Okay, so at this point we wait where while while it loads everything.
Okay, so there you go. We have now Comfy UI. So remember this, the first time that you open, it will be a little bit time consuming, but here you have all the messages and everything. So I'm using this GPU, I have eight gigs of memory. So that is the absolute minimum is you have less than that. It's better to use some of the other options, or you can use it as it is, but it will have in mind that it will be slow and see that it found all these libraries in the location that we gave in that script, remember. And now that, and now here we have our automatic 1111 with a default uh, setup. And this setup always will generate this image. So if you click, click here, Q prompt, by the way, be careful to click just once. If you click many times, it's, it's going to put everything in Q. And there you go. You have the image, see here, and let me show you that you have the late, late in the space, all that stuff, because we add that auction. I like to put it there. I, I like to see the evolution. And you have your image. Always, and I advise you also to look at your prompt here, because sometimes you can have some errors. And so be careful about here, what, what is happening here. So here also you have your time. I have to be uh, clear here also that one of Ventures as well of Comfy UI is tends to be faster than the other tools. So you can do the benchmarking using exactly the same prone libraries and you will see that it's, it tends to be faster. Not always, but it's my personal experience. How fast it is, do not expect something three or four times faster, probably 10%, but you gain some, some time. Okay, so this is it. We have the installation. And at this point, let me show you how to use Comfy UI and talk a little bit about the theory and what is happening. Okay, so now let's talk about the basic theory. I'm not going to details the internet. You're going to find the papers and all the mathematics behind and so on. I'm going to go, I want to go from the point of view as a basic user because this can be very confused. You know, you have all this spaghettification here and can be tricky to understand. So basically what is happening here, what you see here is exactly what you have in focus or automatic 11.11, but everything is not exposed to the user. You have something in a relative nice interface and with the most important options. So what happens here is that first you need to load, to load a model. Okay. You have that model. There are many models. The models are those huge files where basically they train the images. So those models that can be very large. So they have millions and billions of images also with text. So each image can have a te text to identify and they, every, all that information, it is contained there. So you load your model and from that model, you need that model is going to give you or you need to provide something. First, you need to get some information from the model. That is the prompt that is called clip here. So this is an acronym. So going into internet and you're going to find that uh, acronym and also by, you will see that there are many ac acronyms there and I'm going to go into detail. So basically you have a positive and negative trump, uh, prompt. Negative prompt is not compulsory. You need to give some information knowing the positives, what you want to look. So here in this database, you have all that information. So you want to look for this specific information. So you have everything here in a compact node, all that data, images and text, everything. It is a low dimensional data set. Everything has been now trained. And you are looking here for that all that information now in this diffusion space, not the latent space that you have in the model. So this is your text model. After you look for that information, you go to the sampler. The sampler is what is called sometimes also the, 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 the noiser, also a scaler sometimes is, is, is called. So basically here, the sampler is going to take this information with this prompt here, using this option like the seat number. No, this is just to give some random about the number, how, how you want to, to connect that, the number of stacks. This is very important. No, this this parameter we're already talking about that. Okay, this is how, how close your pro, uh, your output will be to, to this prompt. Then the different methods for sampling and the noise and so on. So in this case, it's not used, it's just used for image to image. So basically here you are converting that, all this that you have here from latent space to pixel space to your image. Then also this sampler, they need to take an anti-latent image. 
So remember here we're working we're working text to image. So you have a canvas that is empty. So you're working image to image or so on. Uh, you're going to have here an image. So here you give an empty space, dimensions, you know, and batch size. This is important. This is the number of images that you are going to do. By default, Config UI is going to do it sequentially. So as you put here four. First image, second, fourth image. There is a way to, to, to play around with your canvas here and you know, with all this stuff to do it in parallel. But be careful that if you do it in parallel, you need a lot of memory in your video card. So this is something as well that creates confusion in automatic 11 because 11, 11, because you have two types of batch size. There is one that is parallel and so you use that one. Everything can be super, super slow because you are going to use the whole memory. So be careful about that. And when we address again, automatic 11, 11, I will show you that. So basically this is what is happening. Load your model. You have the prompts. So you are extracting, using the prompts, extracting information there. Then you have all that latent space. This is the by this is the autoencoder. So basically you link this autoencoder here with this box. So basically in this box, you take your latent space, Connect it here, connect it also with your model, all the noise that you have in your model. So when you do all these operations, all the 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 enters that you are that are closer is what you are do, using. You know? So you have a lot of data, you use the data that is similar between each other, and you go here. And this one will convert latent space so to pixel space, and you get your image. And this is it. This is how it works. Since can be way, way more complicated. So here, we like just to show you something, talking about models and the dimension of those models, just to talk about Lion. I already mentioned this in a previous video, but look at that. These models are huge. So for instance, the latest model by Lion is something that is half about 6 billion, uh, 6 billion uh, image text pairs. This means 6 million images plus the text that is going to explain that, that, that image. So that is those are very large data set that they train that. So basically that's what you're doing, taking all that data. And here you have you know, 2.3 billion. So I think the first stable diffusion data set, it was something like 400 million, something like that. Today data sets, they go in the order of billion. The DALI tree, I think it's even larger. And I still recall a while ago, there was a data set that it was trained using the, the shorter, shorter stock images. This was quite funny that when you were generating the images, you always had the, the watermark shorter, shorter stuff, shorter so all around. And it is just to mention. So those data sets are, are very large. And let me go here and to show you my, my installation. That's why also be careful that you need space for those models. And so as you go, I have everything here. Let me go my models, um, bam, 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 stable diffusion. And here I have a few models and see that how big they are. So also maybe, so you have the, I have here the Juggernaut XL6. Now I think there is the version eight. I need to update it. But in any case, talking about the extension, you see safe tensor or checkpoint CHPT, something like that. I have this one. So when you download, I recommend you to download or safe tensor or CKPT. Okay. These are safe. Okay. So they have been, there is some quality control, so there are no security risks, nothing. But if you use the other mentions like the versions like this one, they might be, there might be some security issues. So always go for safe tensor or CKPT. Okay. There are many extensions. So that is the, the small explanation about that. So you have your models, then you have LoRa. LoRa is uh, again, another acronym, acronym and one to go into details. So these one are smaller models. Okay. So models train with smaller data for a specific mission, let's say. So that's it now. And talking about also your, you now your market pace, I like to use civic AI. So here you go and you will find all the latest models. So let's see your now here. So this one. It's a recently one, you have it here. And it's the one you can download and very important, just read what you have here, okay? Because you have sometimes limitations and so on. So this is a very interesting marketplace, but it's not only for models, you have styles. Styles, what are styles? Basically styles is this stuff that you put here. So let me go here and have some prompts here. And let me show you, for instance, 
this and let me do this so this is a quite nice prawn let me go here i put it there a christmas tree made from donut so now that we're in the holiday season let me change my model and let me use jogger now so when you change model by the way here uh, sometimes this might happen so you just can this is very flexible now you can move all your boxes there and so on okay so you move everything and when you change the model, it will be the first time that you use your image, it will be a little bit slow because it's loading the model and doing some stuff. And see this green box? It is because it's, used, it's working there. And see that you have real time the noise redu reduction. So here, no noise. At the beginning, you have noise. And now if I click again, it will be super fast because you already load that. So remember, each time you change model, or you do something before the sampler, it will be a little bit slow because it's loading everything. And see that you have your image. Okay, let me click again. So noise, denoising, 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 latent space, what you have here, to pixel space, your final image. And quite cool, very nice image. Okay, so basically we have this. Okay, so this is your what you are doing. But then the style, it is all that stuff that it will be your fingerprint. Huh? So this, all this stuff that you put there, it is the style. So these styles are always in code in the training. So in the training data set, no, they put all these keywords and so on. So if I add this style, I will get something probably much better, more compelling, you know, or with my own fingerprint. You know? So for instance, I know I really like to to lose the track styles. So you put there in to lose the track style, you will see that you will get an image following that style if it exists, okay? So look at that, this is much, much nicer image because now you're putting a style and also you have here negative prone. So in the negative prone, you can say, what do you, you don't want? So I, to remind you, don't put like no trees. That is a double negation now. So put that, I don't want trees. And then all this information will be in code and then you pass it in the model, it will extract that information from this abstract no array, let's call it. And then together with your empty space and the autoencoder here, it will it will sample everything you following these rules. And then here you just use the decoder to decode Latin space to pixel space. And this is it. But since here it can get extremely complicated because that's why it is important to know what you are doing here. So let me show you something now. I have this here. And for instance, uh, let me recreate this one from scratch to show you. So the first thing is that this is visual programming. Just to, let me put it here in the top. Right click and you can add notes. So the first thing is that you have is always a mobile. No? So you go, can go here and see that you have many auctions. So loaders are your model. So I want to load a checkpoint. Checkpoint is your model. And the checkpoint, you have a model, a clip, the the prompt, and the autoencoder to the kill the code. So here what you have whatever you have available in the past, you put it there. So let me use I like this one. This is one and to show you she's that is this is a, a specific model to do landscapes. So I have it here. I love this one. I work a lot with landscapes, so I use it for landscapes. So I invite you just to play around here in CV AI. So there are many, you no, know, many, many other sites, but I really like this one. Okay, so I will use this one. Then I need to create my prompt. So if you go here and cl you click here, and see that you create that no not to connect and you need to connect it to something. So I need to connect it to click text in code. Okay, because I need to interrogate this one. So this is my, lang large, my language model. No? So you have your large language model and let's call it your large image model there. Then you create another one because you want the negative. Uh, depending on the model that you are using, the negative might not be compulsory, but I recommend you to, to put it there. So basically I'm recreating this okay so see that here i not i not making the distinction positive and negative because that is done in the sampler so if i go here this one now you need to connect to a sampler and see that sampler will ask 
positive and negative. So put negative here. Okay, then the sampler needs to access the model. You can start to see here the visual programming and why, why you need to understand this. Then you are sampling. So you have here, now you are connected with the model. So now the model is providing everything. You can go also and connect this one to the autoencoder, the decoder. No, the you are using basically the decoder part of that autoencoder. But again, that is machine learning, neural network, that is stuff. I don't want to go into details. So you want a latent image, so your canvas. So you go here and anti latent image. Okay, so you want here you give the dimensions, whatever you want to create. Okay, so I still remember the first data set they were they were training with images of 256. Today the standard, or not today, I think already the standard is a, a 1024. No, the, the 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 dimension of the images. And let me go here. Actually, let me think the legend. This one I think it is they're training already with even larger image size. So you can get an idea you know, how expensive it is is to train this now you, you have here the dimension so it's more than they're now getting larger and larger but this can we, we talk about millions of, of dollars now to, to train this stuff well you can look for that information so any case you have your latent space i so see that we connect everything we have here and now here we are in the latent space okay that is the space of the model where you have all the noise where you have all the data that is similar now close according to your prompt that is close together in that, that abstract array according to this prompt and according to these auctions. And now that latent space, you need to convert it to a uh, pixel space. And that is why, where we use this auction here. And now this is an image and you can preview, you can save the image or preview. I'm going to preview. See here that in this one, we have save image. And to mention that that image is always safe. And let me go back here and I'm working here. So the data structure, so do not mess around with this one. And here you have the location, everything. So, but we mentioned that we're putting all the models in automatic 11.11. If you don't have automatic 11.11, you can put everything there. So it's up to you. Output and you have all the images here. So see the images that you are generated, you, you have it there. By the way, in these images, you have the some, uh, you have some metadata. So what you are doing here in your canvas is also safe. So you can open that image automatically. You are going to reproduce this node how the nodes are connected, the prompts and so on. So it's very useful. So later I'm going to show you, you know, how to get templates. So basically it's opening an image that you know it was generated with Confi UI and you have that meta uh, metadata. So what I was doing, I have this one and then you have the image and this is it. So now you are ready to generate an image. So here you have these auctions and just to talk about this one. So you have this seed, it's a random number. So if you fix this number, always you get the same image is you keep all the other auctions the same, but if you change any of these auction images are different, then you have a, st a steps CFG. So I showed this already in a previous video, basic video of focus or automatic 11, 11, but let me show you again the, what is happening there. And I think let me go here and here. So basically the CFG is, is called now the classifier free guidance and the close, the, the higher the value, the more saturation that you add now. So the closer that it will be to your prompt. So low value is not even close to your prompt, low, uh, very high values. It's not recommended because it's going to oversaturate. Okay, but it's up to you. But recommended values is anything between seven and, and 12. So here you have eight, and then you have the steps. Okay, so the steps also have an strong influence how you generate an image. And here I think samplers and steps. So these are the steps on different samplers. There are techniques now to remove that noise and so on. Removing the noise now, remember, is your latent space. So everything is encoded, and then you decode using the decoder in the buy. So basically this is what happens. So more steps, you get better images, but it's more time consuming. So usually recommended values, anything between 20 to 40, 
okay, to have something affordable, but you can go higher, it's up to you. And there is then also something very cool, upscaling. So upscaling is not only increasing the dimension, the, the size, the resolution of your image. It's also that when you increase that resolution, it might be the case that you, you cannot get any more information because it's, this is pixelation that you have here. So basically what is going to do this is that it's going to add information now using all these all these AI generative. And this is crazy. This is beautiful. So at the beginning, I didn't like it. It didn't work very well, but now it's starting to work very well. So look at that. You start with this butterfly you know, image, and then you, you, you increase the resolution, let's say by eight times tall. You go from this to this. But if you increase that one, it's clearly that if you don't do any AI you know, to add information, you are going to get just pixels, OK? Probably a crispy images, but then when you zoom in, you have pixels. But then when you use AI, when you start to zoom, you are adding more information. It might be or it might not be realistic. So it's up to you, but this is what is happening. And it's super cool, this one. So we're going to see how to do all this stuff later. So this is a basic video. I used it in the previous video. I didn't go into details here. We like to go a little bit into more details because we have this complex uh, uh, user interface, but I hope you get the point now. So this will force you to read a little bit how this stuff works. Okay, so we have this one and everything is connected. So here are these options. So I like to use, when it comes to this one, the Ancestra. So there are many of these auto autoencoders. When you see underscore A means that it is ancestral stuff that tends to be better. So this one, I like to use the old older ancestral and let's go like this and let's use another uh prompt so here i have some prompts that i always use to to test so i was talking that i want to use this one let me use this one so this is for landscape so i see that i put that one i'm not going to put anything in the negative prompt but you can also try to look for you no know, uh, keywords, so although you have some keywords when it comes to negative prompts and so on. So, or you can build your own negative prompts. So this is my image, cute. And see that when it gives you this red means that you are missing information. So see that it's telling me precisely. Well, also here it's going to tell you that you are missing, well, it's going to do something, but okay. Now it's doing this one here in the top because I have let me fix that number. So now you fix that number and this is not going to change. So if I click there, it's going to do something there. The image see the latent diffusion and you have the new image, but if you click again, it's not doing anything because you fixed the number. So that is the, the, the seat. So you didn't know what was that. There you go. And you can get an idea that it should change any of these options. You are going to redo the image because somehow you are changing your latent space. Okay, so here you have this error. I'm just missing this because I need to connect it there. And usually I think you should get your error there. Now, Q, and see that green, green, read this, it's parsing information, apply this, look at how it's evolving your image. And there you go. And now we have our final image. Okay, so our nature there. And and using specifically mentioned the, this model, she's that is, and just to look something that this is based in SD 1.5, st uh, stable diffusion 1.5. So I can use a LoRa model. LoRa is something to get even, even better images, not to improve this one. So for instance, let me go nature prone. And I, I have this LoRa model here. Nature prone. I already downloaded this one. So look at that. They need to be compatible. So basically this is, is to refine your nature images. So you can connect that. So how do we connect a lot of models? So pretty much it is the same. You need to add the new box, but now let me go here and here you have a few examples. Okay. So let me go Lora here and you have it there. Okay. So this is basically all these box are the same that we have previously, but now we need to pass the models through the LoRa and then the LoRa connected to here, uh, here, to this one. 
Okay, so I will just need to add one extra box, but what we can do also, and remember I mentioned that here in these images, you have the met metadata. Everything is already encoded. Okay, so if you download this image, sometimes you, you can download a JSON fi file also. Already downloaded, just to show you that I have that image here. And let me go back. So I have the image here. Also, I have another model. And let me go here, a JSON file and see that I already have a predefined you know, setup there in a JSON file. So if I want to use one of those models, I, I just simply need to drag, drag and drop. So for instance, this one, put it there, and there you go. So see how complicated is this one? Okay, my spaghettification, but now that you understand what is happening, you, get, you will get it. And let me put the load at this, this is one I am interested. So this is a lot of that image. You have all this information encoded. You have metadata. Okay. So basically what I want to do here, I want to use this one here. I want to use this one, not the no, nature. See that this nature is for XDXL. I want to use Nate, this one, this one is compatible. I want to use this entry here. Okay, exactly as we did previously. You have this, 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 your sampler. And let me go Q prone and it's telling me but bam 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 checkpoint. Okay. Now is that the K prune. Okay, sorry here. And using the room this is okay. Off you go. So the first time, remember it will take some time, and there you go. So basically I added this LoRa and this LoRa now it's going to give something different there. Mm -mm -mm, it wasn't that nice, not that nice. It's not what I was expecting and probably and using the ROM one three meters there might have been a little pain. Yeah, this is not related they're related to Eva, to nature. So let me go here. Beautiful nature. This is the one. And see that in negative prompts, this like bad hands, for instance, I don't want, I usually, this is, is you, you have people, I don't want text. Text is very difficult. I already mentioned that text is super difficult to do using this. But however, there is one, there is one LoRa model for text and it works perfect. So if you want, you can test it. So be advised that this one text set, it is compatible only with XL, but it works perfect. Now you can get all this text that otherwise it is difficult to get. Okay. So now let me use this Q there and voila. Here we have our image. Pass in there and there you go. Now let's do, let's add some complex, uh, Co uh, some complexity here. So for instance, let's say that I want to do ox scaling. So ox scaling, you can do it at different levels. You can do it at the light latent level and you, you can do it at the image level. So I will do it at the image level. So let me go here. Let me delete this now. Let me go here and see that you have a few options and let me search here, ox scale. Image ox scale with model. See that, okay. Probably if you don't get that, when you connect here, you have, you can, it will propose you what you can use, but also you have search and here in search, you have many, many nodes. Okay. So you can filter by different options and so on. Uh, here I have this list about all these comfy UI nodes. So in the video description, you will have an explanation. So basically this is programming. These nodes is that you were using your Python script, your Python node and putting the functions there. Okay, so that's why it's visual program. So now let me go here, my model. Let me add a scalar model. You have different models. So see that I'm using this one. So you have different models there and there are more, but you need to download then image. So let me do something funny here. So I want my original image, this one. So I connect it here. So this is going from latent space, untouched, unmodified 
to this one. And now let me create a new one. And I want to preview. I don't want to save it. Or yeah, let me save it. Let me do right click. So see in the boxes, you have right click. You can remove. Remember that you can change dimensions and so on. So let me save it also. Save image. And there you go. So our workflow, what we're doing is exactly the same. The LoRa model, remember that the LoRa model, they, they, so they have trigger worth, so you need to trigger that. So actually here, okay. this is not clear to me because here you have, you have here already the, 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 these indexes that it will know how, how strong it will be. But I think also you need to enforce that and you need to trigger that model. So those models, let me go here and you need to bam, 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 bam. Okay. So here you have the, how to trigger the model. So you need to add that keyword and that index, usually the, the higher, okay. The more, the, the, the more way do you add. So that way can be positive or negative one in my personal experience tends to be a little bit high. Okay, so let me put 0 0.8 and now Q prompt. So see that, well, I added everything. I have my images, my steps, my aux scaling, and this is my image. And let me fix this actually. Fix Q prompt. You are here. So we have a new image. Okay, generate this. And now also aux scaling. So the aux scaling pretty much the same probably will be four times larger, but also when, while doing that, it will add more details you know, into your image. So this is crazy. Now you said you, you have a limit there. So four times, but then using a uh, comfy UI, you can, you can apply aux scaling over image emails and you can keep going into it, into an infinite <laughs> number of scaling, but you can, already see that there are differences here. So let me, I cannot, okay, increase that one. And there you go. So I see that more details. So when you zoom in, it will add more and more details to resolve better that, that image. So I should have those images here. Of UI. Uh, output and there you go. So I have this ones, which is the low resolution and let me go this one, the high resolution. So you zoom there in the low resolution, you start to see that for instance, let me go here in this rock and now here you can see that you have better detail, a little bit noisy, but clearly you can see some details here. So this is what it's doing. Instead of having that pixelation, it will add more details. And this is not a perfect case. As I say, I'm not going to perfect images just to show you, but you can do, look at these are really cool. So later we're going to do more advanced stuff where we do properly perfect images and so on. And something also that I really like is like, for instance, you can remove the background using up here, control net and remove the background substitute. So a lot of stuff that you can do with this, you no know, using, Oh, these tools, not only not to create new images, you can manipulate other images. Okay. So there you go. You have your workflow, uh, for instance, clear erase, whatever you have there, and then you can download the default workflow. So your default, as I said, workflow is always this prompt. You have this there, this is standard one and Q, let me regenerate this one. And you can see, you will see the difference. So rec square, look at generating. You have this very nice, it's quite cool, this result. And let me fix this one. Let me fix Q. We get this bottle. Let me change the model. So you will see that different models, as you might expect, different results. So I was using the cheese daddy to do this bottle so the she's that is trained using just landscape so even though we managed to to generate something cool have books here so probably you can put here negative prone books so doesn't put not always work but it can be so here is generating something is generating three bottles 
So sometimes it can do some, some stuff like that. So this was Jogger now. I need to then update it. So uh, ba -da -ba -ba -ba. let me see. And let me go now this one. Okay, put it in queue. So I have to stable the function, the prune, and then I have the, I don't recall what AM I stand for, but let's see if we get the same image now. So the prune means that you have only the train data, you have tra a training data and validation data. So sometimes you have all this stuff. So they prune the model, they didn't have, they, they erase the data they used to, to validate. And then you have the M only M minus, uh, I don't recall, but let's see if we get the same image. So it's prompting. Um, there is slightly different. So there are some, the models have some, they are very similar, but there are some, some differences. So they were trained in a different way. So this was one and this was the other. Okay. So quite similar, but here in the, in the top, you see the, the small difference. Then this one also, it will generate something similar. This was, this was the cheese that it, I, I'm quite surprised that it, the result was the cheese that it, uh, it's much better than the stable diffusion 1.5. Impressive. Okay. So what else we can do? So yeah. This is, I don't want to extend this too much. There is a lot to do here. So I hope you have now the basic, now here, the gist, how this work important. Just get it, an idea, the workflow, the theory behind. Don't go into the neural networks, whatever. Just know that you have a model, you need to pass that through a prompt. Then maybe you can put here a LoRa. There are many. You can connect multiple LoRa's. Then after you have all this stuff, you can do the sampling. Then late in the space, you can pass that to your decoder and generate the image. And then you can plug something to do ox scaling there and so on. Or you can generate multiple images and whatever. So for instance, let me go here. Latent and for instance, here I can do ox scaling, but I can do the ox scaling of the latent space. So you have there the method, then the latent you can connect it to another sam sampler. This latent, let me connect it to the decoder, and then this one preview the image. This one I need to connect it to divide there. I have this one. I also need the prompts from here and the prompt from here. And also I need to connect the model there. Okay. So previously I showed you ox scaling of the image, but now you can do it in the latent space. I don't know if this is properly correct. And there you go. So see that I scale in my latent space by this factor. So you are getting this latent space from here at this scale factor 1.5. Okay. And then apply this options now. So let me use the same fix and let's see what we get. So bam, 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 bam. All, all the same actions and let me do so say that in this case it's going just to do this one there and what is happening is this this is what i'm get, getting when i apply an ox scaling there so if we compare the images are very different but this tends to be this is quite cool three bottles and you have the galaxy they're quite cool the nature behind but Important that here I mentioned that you have this denoise that in this case is not doing much, but here it's going to do something. Denoise is it is the fantasy that you give to the model. So a value of one, uh, I think it, the maximum is one. It means that it's more creative. Re creative means that it's more this image it will be very different from the starting one. So let me go here and put a low value. So you put zero, I think it's going to give you an error. So if you put a low value. It will be very similar and there you go. So it's much, much similar to the starting one. There might be some differences, but 
Also, we're going to get more details because we are scaling and actually, okay, okay, it was a little bit shitty. Oops, sorry about that board. I put 0 0.5. Okay, 0 0.5, much better. And there you go, we have this. Yeah, look at that. Added some trees there, some fantasy. So, and as you can see, also the image you get, you have better details there. As you upscale that late in the space, it gives you better details when. And let me add a larger body. So, so also don't be too generous there. Now, as you put, I think probably the maximum value would be four or six, but the larger that value is, now the, the more memory that you are going to use. So in this case, I think it will take some time to do that. Okay, so here you have everything, the steps. So previously it was 11 seconds. Now already you, you feel the difference. So almost twice the time, so 24 seconds. And there you go. Actually, yeah, much, much nicer. And this is it. Another way to do upscaling. So things can get very, very crazy here. And these examples that you have, which by the way, you have it here in your original documentation, Confi UI examples, you have many setups. So feel free to, to play around with these setups. Okay, so for instance, this SDXL Turbo, this is mind blowing. So this is generating. So as you might guess here, the important stuff is if, if the prompt, okay, getting the prompt. So you need to have a rich vocabulary. You will see that sometimes there are some prompts that are crazy. So if you have a very rich vocabulary, you can get crazy images. But using, if you want to practice that, I like, for instance, look at this, this prompt professional, high quality ink and wash. So I pretty much know all these triggering words in the model, impressive, immersive environment, a waterfall, and you put all these. So this is also, this is another technique that you can add some weight to these keywords. So you have these keywords and you are adding more weight. So more or less weight. So if you put, you can be also negative, okay? So look at that, I have this specific one. Let me put it, I really like this prompt. Now let's mention that I work. I like to do a lot of landscape images. So let's see what, what we get with this one. Not very nice because I'm not using the right model, but talking about now this one, while it, while it does that, I want to show you because if you want to learn more about Comfy UI. You can find a lot in, in, in YouTube, but I forgot there is. Ba -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum Let me recall the use. Forget his name. Okay, here we have Scott the Wheeler. And well, uh he he does uh I think it is weekly, he always does these live sessions. He worked for a stable diffusion, he's in charge of quality assurance as a stable AI. You, you have it there. And it's it's amazing what he can do. He shares some of his workflows and follow him and I always follow him and I have learned a lot about Comfy UI. Okay, it's quite can be quite tricky. There are many options there. So he would show you crazy, crazy complicated workflow. So I advise you follow him and when he works see who who you will learn a lot. So okay, we have here it's quite nice, but let me change this library and let me use um bam 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 just that is and if you want, you can add the Lora. I'm not going to do it. So now this one is going to redo everything there. So, uh, uh, and there you go. I really like this kind of, of art for images. And now we have here. 
Okay, so here we compare the aux scale one, the, the one with no aux scaling, and this one with aux scaling at the lat latent space level. So it does some modification, probably it's not. Okay, there you go. Now yeah, you have it there. So it was doing something, it was evolving. So kind of, yeah, cool. It, more details. It add a person there. I don't like that. Probably like a ghost. But yeah, you can see the difference. So now you go here, people. I don't want people. So you can add it there. And you can see how when doing this stuff, some people say, oh, yeah, doing this image is quite easy. You see that requires trial and error. It's not a single image usually you do one over one over other over other and yeah it, it's time consuming for me when i generate an image sometimes it can take me one hour to get the image i like and as you can see also you were you will generate very cool nice prompts and it, it will be your fingerprint you know? so those prompts honestly i think you can you know, put some copy right there but, but the idea is to share everything when i do my prompts i always share everything but yeah, you have here some, they're putting some energy, some brain power. So it's not like the computer is doing everything that you have there, your fingerprint. I see that much nicer. Remember that there we have it, somebody like a small child. Now, nothing. And this is it. Okay. And let me go here. Talking about copywriting images, I think recently in China, they they rule out that it is possible to copyright all these images generating with AI and this style. So they are recognizing that there is some work there when you do this. So if I zoom in, we might get more details. So, and then as you want, you take this image and then you can put it there. So you can do image to image. So very important, I mentioned that I show you the workflow image to image, uh, sorry, text to image, but you can do image to image. You can do in painting, out painting. You can link to control net. You can do even be, by the way, you can do a stable diffusion video, a lot of it stuff. So hopefully I will create many videos to show that. So at this point, yeah, I would like to stop here. Oof took me more than I was expecting. As you see, now you start to do this stuff and you get involved and link here, move there. That's it. By the way, if you want to save this one, you click there, save, you save your JSON file and then you can reopen it. You can also, this image will have all that information encoded. So let me see if that, if I open properties, uh, details. No, you, yeah, you need to use a tool to to read the the properties of, of the image. But you have everything encoded there, so you can dr drag and drop the image there, and you will get no everything there. So you will put it there again. See so that I reproduce the whole stuff. And to show you something, just to the last stuff. So let me close here. I close my no and let me launch automatic 11 11 okay because in automatic 11 11 you have a nice tool that you can see all the properties of the image so i think it should be available also in comfy ui i haven't i haven't found that but probably yeah, somebody has done it just let me know so you, all these images, you have that metadata. And let me see if I can see it here. Now I will show you the image. How can I see the metadata? So then it was up. Okay, six. Okay, so let's wait for 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 automatic eleven eleven to open. We have it here. Cool. What I mentioned also, well, I already mentioned that it. Uh, Comfy UI tends to be faster. So what I wanted to use, what I want to use here, PNG info, and uh, here, boom, and there you go. This is the metadata. So you have all this metadata there, and there you have all the workflow, and then you have how you generate the library and everything. So this is this is also really like the suction and in. 
config UI that is saving all the metadata. Also, uh, automatic 11, 11 will save this metadata. Focus doesn't save that metadata. Okay, somebody knows if it's possible to do it, just let me know. But this is very important, no? because here you get the trace of what you are doing. Okay, with this and done, thank you very much for your attention. And hope to see you in future videos that in where we're going into more details. So this was basic, very basic stuff. I'm not generating impressive, super cool images just to show you how it works. But hopefully in future videos, we go into more advanced stuff. So thank you for your attention. Don't, do not... Uh, do not forget to subscribe to our channel if you want to support our mission and yeah have a nice holiday bye